Hey everyone, um, we're taking a look at the backpack shocker today. Um, this is a Haltech backpack shocker. Um, it's, a, it's a nice unit because the whole thing is actually made out of a Pelican case. So it's a waterproof case and when you close it up, um, it's pretty good because most of it is, is, is waterproof. So that's kind of the way I like it. Most backpack shocking units are the same. They're gonna have a power source, and this one takes its uh, power from a lithium-ion battery. Um, hooks up uh, just like this, red to red, black to black. Uh, when it's hooked up, um, you're almost ready to go, right? Uh, hook it up like that. And then all backpack units um, have similar sorts of functions. Uh, everybody calls this the rat tail. Um, it's the cathode, right? Or the negative. And then Matt's holding, hey Matt. Uh, Matt's holding the anode, which is uh, an anode ring. So this is the positive, right? And so positive, negative. When you put this in the water, like the whole world in the stream is an electro, uh, is an electrocuted. Basically you're working with a certain distance from the anode ring. A lot of times like five or six feet. Uh, so it's not like electrified all over the place. Um, so basically how this works is um, what we're going to do is when we get in the water, uh, we're going to turn it on and then we're going to uh, play around with some of our settings uh, to usually with this unit, it likes to fish at like three amps. So paying attention to this uh, function meter once we get going. So there's a switch here and then there's a switch here. Both of these will have to be on for it to work. So we're gonna go over a couple of safety systems here first before we get started. It's one of the things that we really wanna do is have a little bit of uh, understanding of how our gear works before we start to use it. So what I'm gonna do, um, so Matt is um, the model here. Basically I'm gonna turn this unit on and Matt, don't touch anything, okay? Um, basically what I've done is turn the unit on. Now I'm gonna turn this switch up on top on. And so now I've got uh, my display comes on uh, so one of the first things that is a safety system for this unit is this external switch, right? So if Matt gets in trouble, I'll hit the button and a person that's on Matt's crew will actually turn this off. So this is a safety function. And this thing is all closed up, right? Um, and we'll close it up now. Um, it's on, right? This is one of the first things that you hit. Um, this is another safety function. Um, the light will let you know that, hey, all the power is on. And then when Matt puts power in the water, this thing will actually, this little strobe will actually flash and let you know. Plus it has an audible beep that you'll be able to hear to let you know that there's power going in the water. So the uh, first line of uh, defense right here, Matt falls or is going down, we hit the button. Uh, the other thing that happens is it has a tilt switch on it. So Matt, um, bend over beyond 45 degrees. Okay. So what just happened is we just um, touched, we just triggered the tilt switch, and now I'm gonna turn that off because that's annoying. And uh, so if Matt fell over, right, and this thing was was on, it would shut off automatically. It also has an inundation sensor, and the inundation sensor is down here on the bottom, and if Matt fell and this went in the water, there would be two points of contact down here that would actually, um, the circuit would be completed between them and the inundation sensor would trip. So if this thing goes underwater, uh, it would shut itself off, which is a really nice feature. A couple of other things, pieces of safety gear that Matt is wearing, um, he's got lineman's gloves on. So these are the same sort of gloves that a, a, a lineman working on um, high, high power would, would, you know, like your, your nice egg folks, they would use even better ones than this. And you can see these, these gloves are rated for up to uh, 7,500 volts of uh, AC current, which is more than this backpack um, puts out. So these are uh, essential, right, to be wearing. Another safety system is on the anode itself. This is a magnetic reed switch. And so inside this is a, is a sealed magnetic reed that actually, this is the magnet here, and it moves back and forth inside. So when you push this over, a little magnet pulls the switch, right? So if Matt fell, he would just let go of the handle and then this would shut itself off. So some other pieces of safety gear 
that Matt has is actually the anode hole itself, which is made of fiberglass, which is a non-conductive material. And so when you, um, when you go and um, you're at work, you work for the DEC, you work for the federal government, you work for a private consultant, one of the first things that you should look at is, what is their anode made out of? It's a commercial anode, usually it's gonna be made out of fiberglass, or it may be made out of a material called epoxy. Um, it's an epoxy pole, and that material will look orange. Some of the other things that Matt has on, he's got protective footwear on. Uh, in this case, it looks like he's got, this looks like maybe five mil neoprene. Five mil neoprene, and he's got um, boot foots on, which don't leak. If you have leaky waders, uh, take it from me, you can be electrocuted. Um, I've electrocuted myself uh, by just sweat coming from my body on the inside of a pair of lightweights. Lightweight waders are not enough. You want rubber, or you want heavy duty canvas, or you want heavy duty neoprene that do not leak. And Zach over there is gonna give me that scap net. Uh, the scap net also has a non-conductive net handle, right? So a, a person that's following Matt is gonna be in the stream, they're gonna be scapping, and those also need to be non-conductive net handles, and those folks should have on a pair of lining gloves just like Matt does as well. Another safety thing that you want to keep in mind is you want to have a group plan. Uh, before anybody gets in the water, you want to have a person that is uh, uh, running the backpack, you want to have a team of people that are scapping, and you want to have one person in the group that does nothing other than make sure we have a, 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 a safety plan for Matt. In other words, usually that's me, and I'm going to be following Matt, and I'm watching everything, and I'm going to be the person controlling the button in case Matt or another member of the group falls. Uh, over on the bank here, we also have a, an AED, uh, Automatic Electronic Defibrillator, right? Which is essentially just that, just in case somebody accidentally gets um, electrocuted and their heart goes into fibrillation. So this is a, a defibrillator that works automatically. Before you use these, make sure you get trained. So uh, remember what we've got here, we've got this thing all hooked up. We've got our power switch on. I've got my tilt switch on, so that means if Matt goes beyond a 45 degree angle, uh, the tilt switch will work. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this on. Okay, so right now we are, um, we're at zero because Matt is putting no power in the water at all. And what I wanna do first is I wanna start at a fairly low setting. Um, and I've got it over on mean current, that's okay right here. I've got the frequency all the way down. Uh, Matt put it in the water uh, and turn it on, turn the anode on. And right now we're putting out uh, about 1.5 amps. Okay, turn it off. And you could see, or you heard it, the um, enunciator, you saw the light flashing. That wasn't quite enough amps. Um, with this stream here, we probably wanna be up around three. So what I'm gonna do now, Matt has the power off. You never wanna turn a mechanical switch with power on because it will arc the switch, essentially your arc welding. So I'm gonna turn this up. I've turned the uh, frequency up just a little bit. I'm gonna turn up the uh, output voltage. Uh, Matt, go ahead, try it again. Now you see it going faster and he's up around 2.3. Okay, turn it off, please. And I'm gonna turn that up one more time. And I want to, I'm looking for, this unit likes to run somewhere around three amps. Go ahead. Okay, so we're pushing 2.8. Okay, stop. 2.9. That's a good place to start. You may even want to start a little bit lower and see how the fish behave. And Matt, turn it on one more time and take the anode out of the water. Sam, if you could show the anode coming out of the water. Okay, pull the anode out of the water. Okay, but don't turn it off. Okay, so right now, okay, stop. What we've got is the anode out of water. All right, now put it back in the water and turn it on. Okay, so basically, Stop for a sec. So what he just did is he actually brought one of the electrodes out of the water and the water is the, the connection of the circuit, right? So when the circuit is broken, it says, hey, anode out of water. It also could have been uh, cathode out of water. It just says electrode out of water, right? So he could have had his rat tail, if he's walking down the stream, his rat tail also could have been out of the water. So those are some of the things. And then to get it going again, a lot of people just hit this, but all you really need to do is put the anode back in the water and turn it on. So we're all set up to do a little demo shocking here. Uh, Matt's got the backpack all set up. We've got it set up for around, running around 
three amps. Sam is uh, going to be our demo scapper, and we're going to walk up through the campus creek here a little bit. Um, my job is to not get electrocuted. Uh, go ahead, Matt. So um, we caught our first fish in the stream. Um, really cold water today, so we're going to take a look and see how long this fish recovers. So when a fish gets um, electrofished, usually there are three stages of electrofishing. The first is fright, or they try to get away from you, and then the second is tatany, or um, basically, it's like when you grab an electric fence uh, with your hand and it's really hard to not let go. You're like, ah, I want to let go. Um, and you see the fish is um, moving around like its fins are kind of in a little bit. And then this narcosis, right? The third stage is narcosis, which is electrically induced sleep. And so what we're waiting for these fish to do is recover to see if our setting is correct. So these, these fish are just starting to come back around. Um, a little bit and um, it's been about a minute. So it's been about two minutes. Um, this fish has, these fish have recovered in two minutes, which is about, for this water temperature, that's pretty darn good. Um, this fish has a black dot on the base of the dorsal fin, which makes this fish a, uh, a, um, a creek chub. And then this fish right here is a black-nosed dace. See how the belly is uh, so white and the, black, the back is olive drab and the, the, the dark line goes right out onto the nose. That means this is a black-nosed dace. So two minutes after getting electrofished, these fish are fine, which is pretty darn good at this water temperature. So for this demonstration, we're just gonna let them go back into the pool.